be hearing from Wan He. But before going in too much, I'm just going to give us a couple minutes to see if anyone else will join, and then we can continue from there. Okay, for those who are new, my name is Alex Chapin, and I'm a member of the working group for the webinars of the BIPSA Research Committee. And today we are having a webinar about daylight in window view from Wan He Ko. And I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Wan He is a assistant professor at New Jersey Institute of Technology. Her research focuses on integrated analysis of environmental quality for architecture and urban design with an aim to improve occupant health, well being, and productivity. Prior to joining NGIT, she worked as a postdoctoral researcher at the Center for the Built Environment, UC Berkeley, where she also earned her PhD degree in architecture with a specialization in building science, technology, and sustainability. The webinar is gonna be hosted, is hosted by the BIPSA Research Committee, BIPSA USA, with the goal to share new ideas from research to the building simulation community. Later, I'm gonna put a link in the chat. If you're interested in joining our research committee, you can use this link to, to, to express that interest so that you can find out more information about it. If you have questions during the webinar, please put them in the Q&A window in Zoom and someone will respond to them if applicable or they'll be addressed at the end. The presentation will be about 40 minutes and we'll have time for questions at the end. And we can, the host can unmute you to, to ask your question in, out loud or we can just handle it through the Q&A window. Now we have Wan He with her talk. Great. Um, thank you, Alex, for introduction. So, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Wan He. As Alex introduced me, I'm with NJIT as assistant professor. I just joined this school like this January. And then um, today I'm going to talk about um, some of the research project that I worked on uh, while I was at UC Berkeley with Center for the Built Environment. Um, I gave a similar talk to multiple different events and I'm excited to give this talk to a building simulation community and to get some feedback about what you think about um, this presentation and then what's the future ideas on building simulation with around uh, daylight and window view. So let's start with some general idea about the windows. Um, so as you all know, window has been one of the primary design elements in architecture. And as you know, like having a proper window indoors become more important during the COVID-19 pandemic area as it's the primary mean for us to have a visual connection to outdoors. 
such as visual and sight circuit and stimuli and connection to other humans and etc. And then there are quite a lot of plant scientific literature demonstrated that the positive effect of daylight and views on occupant occupants, including improved health and well-being, cognitive performance and stress recovery, and environmental satisfaction and reduced comfort. And all those positive effect is not only applicable for one specific building types, as you can see in the photos, for healthcare um, building or learning environment or even office environment, all show like daylight and view has a pretty good um, positive effect on human beings living there. Also, um, when we think about the economic value of the building, uh, a good window view and daylight actually has positive effect on that. And from um, last year, like there's like a paper came out from MIT that they said better with daylight and views showed 6% effective rent premium. So we already kind of know that like it's important when we decide where to live. So with all this positive effect of daylight and views in you know like buildings and occupants and even real estate industry, um, something that I could was thinking was um we always thought of like daylight and view all together, and then not many studies shown that like how to kind of understand those two separately and assess separately and then how to understand that more integrated way. So one of the reasons why we don't have that process was like we don't really have a proper definition that defines window view quality. So before we setting up that definition, we our research team and myself like you know checked the, what's the definition of the view. And then from the Cambridge um, dictionary, that we were able to find the definition of the view is what you can see from a particular place. And then it's the, the very important concept here is more like what you see and then and, and then it's also dependent on where you are located within the space. And then when we think about that, like the definition, overall definition of the view for the built environment, we found that like there's a book written by Trigg and Jen Wilson that they explain it like views and inside of buildings occur when daylight or light reflects off outdoor surfaces and this visual information is transmitted through windows. So it's kind of show that like without the daylight or light, we cannot even see the view. So daylight and views are heavily correlated. But then the thing is like in the building standard or other um, simulation software, there's not many aspects that we think to different entities separately and assess separately. So if we cannot assess the window view quality separately, then we cannot really, I mean, like a measure or analyze that one to utilize that effect into the building design process. So that was our research team's claim. And as you can see the photos, like there's like, you know, as you can see, like the view and daylight always comes through the window together. Sometimes it has better view than the daylight effect, but sometimes the view effect is minimal, but then the daylight is much more creating the contrast and then the pattern quite well in the building. So it's really like um, interesting relationship between those two. But for this particular study that I'm gonna uh, present, it's gonna be focusing on the window view. And then we're gonna talk about the what's the definition of the window of quality uh, later time of this presentation. So very first study that I'm gonna present to you is about experimental um, lab study that I did. Um, so my research question was, what is the impact of the having a window view in workplace? So even though many benefits from the window views have been recognized, this research is often conducted using images rather than a real window or in a field study setting where lighting or thermal condition is not controlled. So our research team conducted a lab study that evaluates the impact of having a window view in workplace while um, try to controlling the daylight effect as a minimal. 
So here is some background of that uh, lab study. So while assessing the effect of the window view, we considered, considered the concept of the multi-sensory system. As you can see in this um, diagram, human perceive the environment through a multi-sensory system, not only like the visual system, there's like a scent and there's like um, acoustic aspect and all these five senses work together. And then we perceive the environment surrounding us. But among these, um, multiple sensory systems, human vision is the uh, most dominant sensory system. So we hypothesize that having a window view versus no view would affect the uh, occupant thermal response differently. Because as you can see, like when you are in the office with a really large view with the good um, view or where you're in the windowless condition, it's gonna be quite different. So we thought that like those kind of like multi-sensory integration may occur to test it out in our lab study setting. So as a method wise, um, we conducted a human subject study uh, with um, in a climate climatic chamber at UC Berkeley Center for the Built Environment, where the system can control the lighting, thermal and ventilation conditions. People often ask like what happened to the window? Like there's like um, double skin in that window you see in the photo. It's It has like two different layers so that we should the, um, the constant air temperature try to keep the thermal um, effect from the window constant. So even if there's a window, like there's no thermal difference between uh, these different surfaces between like that, um, the window. And then as you can see in the floor plan, um, we use the uh, floor to ceiling curtain to divide the chamber into two different spaces, one with the window, one without the windows, while keeping the uh, all, both environment thermally identical, which is 80 to 4 Fahrenheit, slightly warm condition. And then the view, what, what kind of view we have for the chamber is, as you can see uh, in the image, it has like a really nice tree views. It's southern facing window, but has a really large overhang blocking all the direct sunlight. At the same time, the trees also block the direct sunlight as well. So we we were able to achieve like really minimal contribution of the daylight and there's no direct sunlight coming in while we are running. And also the diffuse daylight was only the contribution. And then the both uh, light level of both rooms are like about the same, um, up, uh, around 400 lux. And then if you look at the window room, there's like a lighting fixture in the ceiling and then the wind uh, diffuse daylight from the window both contributed that light level. And then daylight uh, among that 400 lux daylight contribution was minimal. So um, the experimental design was we recruited the uh, 86 people and exposed them to do two different conditions as I showed you with the windows and without the window while keeping thermally identical again. And then um, the participants stayed each rooms for about an hour while taking surveys on thermal perception, emotion and cognitive performance test. So it's, it was like a back-to-back -back one uh, two hour test, one hour in the one condition, the, the, and then after the one um, 10 minute break outside of the chamber and come back and then they exposed to two different condition. And then about the measurement, um, about the thermal sensation or comfort measure, like we deployed the survey questionnaire, as you can see here, like one of the example thermal sensation, we ask right now, how do you feel? And then they can kind of move the slide around like from minus three to three so to answer, you know, how they felt about the moment and what's compared when they're with the window condition or without the window condition. About the emotion wedger, we use the circ complex um, model, which is a really well established emotion measure in um, social psychology field. And also it's called by affect octant. Um, the key of this measurement is like there's a two different axes. One y axis, as you can see, is like a negative 
versus positive. The other axis is like um, low arousal versus high arousal. So combination of these two axes will create eight different um, different emotion measure. So we uh, we kind of chose like three as active to represent each octant. And then we ask how they feel at the moment for all those eight different measures and compare it. So the third one was about the cognitive performance tests. Uh, some people ask me about how you measure the cognitive performance. And it's, it's more like a computer game. So there's a different construct you can measure in terms of human cognition. And then um, I'm just showing two different um, like a test that we deployed, which is working memory test as well as concentration. So if you achieve higher score, you focus more and like, you know, your working memory worked better than the other time. And then the last measure we did was creativity performance test, which is about um, the alternative uses task. It's a simple test that you just give common items such as newspaper and then ask people in the limited time that they, if they can think of any other alternative use for that item. So for example, for a newspaper, they can kind of start the fire or wrap the garbage and sweat the flies and stuff like that. But we give like really um, limited number of times so that they can be really um, try to be creative to come up with the ideas. And then the number of the original answers they created with within the limited time, the score was considered to be like high. If it's higher number, then that's higher creativity uh, sc um, that score. So that was a measurement we did. Um, so I did a lot of like, you know, like a stat analysis or like a graph uh, visualization in my scientific paper. But in this seminar, I just wanted to summarize the result because that's more exciting part to for you guys to hear about. So the first, um, Result and most exciting finding we had was with the window, people felt cooler. Um, so if you remember what I said about the experimental setting, it was like slightly warm amb ambient condition, which is 82.4 Fahrenheit and approximately 1.3 Fahrenheit or a degree C people felt lower that much, even though the thermal condition kept the same, only difference was the window, having a window or not. And then 12% more people felt thermal, thermally comfortable, even though the thermal condition is exactly the same. And then when we try to understand what's the um, energy implication of that thermal sensation difference, then when we ran quickly um, simple, um, building simulation in uh, energy simulation in San Francisco building, um, we were able to quantify that effect as an 8% reduction in cooling energy and 6.5 reduction on total HVAC energy um, for that specific case. So we can see that with having just window, like make a people felt cooler, and then that can have, they can kind of like indirectly related to um, the energy saving potential. And then also like when we look at the emotion measure, like people say if they felt happier, they showed increased positive emotions and decrease in negative emotions. And then also people say they're more focused. Um, and then when we kind of analyze the, um, the quant quantifiable effect, uh, we saw that five to 6% better working memory and concentration. So we found that with the windows, people felt all those positive things related to comfort, thermal comfort, or like well-being, or like um, their productivity. So considering all these multiple effects of window access, we see that providing a window view in workplace is important for the human occupants. Um, so after that, like uh, we were thinking of like, you know, what determines the quality of a window view? Because we, in our lab study that I just presented, it has a trees. So of course, like um, in, we all know intuitively, like tree view may be good. And then what if we have a better view, like, you know, exciting views, or if you have a, um, like, you know, not a good view. And if that positive effect that we found in the lab study is gonna be the same. So we really don't know about it. So 
and then we don't know how to assess the different quality of the window view. So our next um, research question was like how we can assess the quality of the window view. <clears throat> Sorry. So whenever I give this talk, I ask audience about imagine like you're working in your workplace and you have a choice of where to sit some type of window and then if I ask you where would you prefer to work then the obvious answer is like you want to have a window more more of look like on the image on your right and then if I ask you like why you think that way of course there's a multiple answers and then it's really obvious and then it's it's combination of the multiple factors what you see through the window how big and how clear the view is they're all different however there's no design framework that considers all these factors. So we reviewed over 100 building standards and green certification systems and scientific literature related to window view. And we combined all the recommendation from this literature into three variables that define window view quality. And based on the industry advisory workshop at Center for the Built Environment, we developed the uh, view window view quality index that can be used as a design tool. So based on the literature review, um, we identified three primary variables of window view quality. Imagine that this is a building. So the first variable is view content. What visual features the occupants see from the window? It is closely related to the very early design stage, such as site selection, planning, and building messing. The second is view access. It's how much of a window view the occupants see in the building. And it is related to facade design and floor layout. The last variable is um, the clarity and how clearly the occupant can see through the window. And it is related to facade material and control. And when all these three factors affect the um, view quality. So let me briefly go over each variables more in detail to give you some more idea about what could be the design criteria. So the first variable is a view content. It's the sum of the visual features seen in a window view. So there are four criteria. And the first one is nature view versus urban features. And of course, there are some specific urban features that people like to see, such as Eiffel Tower. But in general, people preferred nature view over urban features. And horizontal stratification, as you can see on the uh, right top image, um, you can kind of see that if we have like a ground layer, landscape layer, and sky layer all together, that considered to be an excellent view content. And then in terms of the content distance, how far the outdoor object is seen in your window, um, people generally like to have a distant view so that they have more variability. And then the last one is more um, understudied areas of the criteria is about dynamic features, like if you have a movement in the window view. And then people, traffic, anything is not static shown in the window view, people usually prefer that one compared to the static view. The view access is the metrics that quantifying how much of the window view an occupant sees through a, from a particular location within a space. And then design criteria we found in the literature, there are multiple. Um, view angle of the view, which is like the, if you draw the angle line from your location within the building to the window frame, like both horizontal and vertical, that's a view angle. And then lead and European guideline use that one to um, evaluate the view access. Um, and then the other one is like a distance from a window to the people or um, the window to wall ratio was used in Briam. Um, and then the most of the green certification system uses a spatial assessment of the view access. Uh, as you can see on the top right um, image, 
usually it's more like a how much percentage of the floor space has like a direct visual contact with the windows. And then the problem of this matrix is it's nice that it's spatial like assessment, but they don't really define what kind of like view they have. Even if it's really crappy window hand, uh, air handling lunar view, they, they, they consider that one as the same as a like, tree views or really nice. Um, uh, sky view too. So that's a problem with the current metrics. And then the lastly, like this in the simulation field, like some people use it, the ray cassif from the viewpoint. And then um, that's really interesting, but it costs a lot of like time and the uh, specialty and the researchers or engineers to run that kind of simulation. And then the third one is about the um, clarity. It's most understudied area. And then that's the one thing that our research team at uh, UC Berkeley and Center for the Built Environment is looking at that. Um, it's about the metric that assessing how clearly the visual content in the view can be seen by an occupant. And there, there are like three major design criteria. So window design, especially placing of the glazing support like mullions can obstruct the view and glazing and shading material can also block this toward the window view as shown in the image. Even if we design a building with the maximum glass area, as you can see on the top right hand um, that image, often people need, a, need to draw the blinds because of the glare or maybe like thermal discomfort or privacy issue. So those should be considered and also differentiate material can yield different view clarity. So image you see in the bottom right uh, is a two different shade and the fisheye view camera that I took and the LVNL. And that has exactly the same solar transmittance value, but because of other optical properties are different. As you can see, like you see very different view clarity among these two fabric shade. And then the lastly, really important point of the cl view clarity is about the temporal and composition attributes such as what's the minimum acceptable level of view clarity considering partial operation of the shade and how long window can be viewed under the level. And those could be studied further. And these temporary attributes also need to be considered in conjunction with the climate-based daylight metrics. So this is the one of the variable, view variables that we need to consider daylight effect with the view. So far, I explained three variables of our framework, and now I'm introducing an index that describes the conceptual basis of view quality, which is VQI. It has a basic equation format as a product relationship of those three uh, variables. So all three variables, content, access, and clarity plays a role for view quality. And if one of the variable is low, even if the other two are high, the resulted window view quality will be still low. To reflect this, we propose um, VQI as that product relationship and then assign zero for if, it's, uh, if one of the variable is um, below minimum acceptable range. So these three images explain the equation further. So for the first image, if you your view content is like low quality, which is a nearby brick wall, the occupant would not be satisfied even if the high level of view access and clarity. By the same um, token, if an occupant sits far away from the window, which you can see in the middle of the image, uh, which is like insufficient view access because it's too far, the, even though the view content or the clarity is high, it's not going to be satisfactory window view quality because like we cannot see much because it's too far. And then similarly, if the view that require constantly require like, you know, like a shading device to protect the occupant from the glare achieves a little view clarity and therefore efficient view quality. So in our paper, like we kind of like organize our equation driven based on the literature review and uh, theoretical background have like a, a, some of the mathematical formats. So first the view content having like, you know, if they have a sky layer, like landscape layer and then um, ground layer, and then how that modify with the other um, criteria like content distance, or if they have a nature versus no nature. And then it has all the um, criteria like I explained. And then the view access is it's really about what's the minimum threshold and the saturation point. And based on those range, we can set up like zero to like one, and then we can assign those values. Same for the clarity. And then about the weighting, like um, so in, in our paper, we presented as a like a 
equal to all, but of course, for some specific building types which require more higher view content, maybe designer can like put more weighting uh, for the content compared to the other. But since it's like a product relationship, all those three uh, coefficient, the product of th those three coefficients should be one to keep the same range. So using that um, equation format, the index, um, this figure shows how VQI can be calculated across different window views using four labels, insufficient, sufficient, good, and excellent following European daylighting guideline. And as the green bar shows, it ranges zero to one. And you can see that if one of the variable is below minimum, which like the case that I explained before, the overall quality of the view are rated insufficient. And if the view has all three layers and natures with the good access and clarity, which is on the image on your left, it will achieve the excellent rating. So what is the contribution of this paper? So we, our framework provide a concise design recommendations and we um, developed the VQI model which is, has like mathematical model. And it was um, discussed more, uh, more than 150 um, architects and practitioners. And it was published as a peer, uh, peer review journal, which is Lucas IES Lighting um, Journal. And with the framework, designers, engineers can kind of create a built environment with the quality views. And then also, with the quality views that we create, um, we can improve the comfort and well-being and health, and also the productivity, increase the productivity. And then the research point of uh, point of view, like it was very first holistic design framework, and it was built upon comprehensive literature. So with that paper, like uh, having one paper is not going to solve all the problem. And then we kind of thought that it would be nice to promote that the findings and framework so that we can kind of have um, enhancement and grow global interest and understanding on benefits of the view. So View Glass, the EC Glass, Glass company, as well as PGE and Center for the Built Environment supported that. So we organized a virtual symposium and in-person workshop. So for the virtual symposium, it was focused on the view research and design practice. So we had a three different panels, one for more like empirical research findings from different uh, like a discipline. And then the second one is more within the architecture domain, like how the researchers or professors like develop the design uh, index to evaluate the window view quality. And then the last panel was like the practitioners who actually uh, develop their own tools to analyze a view assessment already, even though there's a no guideline exists, but for the client ask for them to analyze or their project is really important to think about it. So they already deployed those um, aspects and then they shared um, their findings there. And then complement to the virtual symposium, we also organized an in-person workshop to engage uh, more building science and design communities in the view research. But since it was COVID under COVID time last year, so we were only able to recruit a few people who are willing to travel to Berkeley, as you can see in the photos. But then still it was pretty good a discussion came out. Uh, we defined the window view quality and reached some consensus around like, you know, what should be done and what's the view variables. And we developed the position statement out of this workshop. And then we invited uh, other researchers and designers in the world to sign on if they agree with our statement. And then 54 people um, signed on. So let me just briefly summarize what we talked in the position statement. So first, uh, like we defined what's the window view quality. Like I kind of briefly mentioned about the definition is important and then we don't have like enough definition about it. So in the position statement, when we, we had a more researchers and these designers to discuss about, we define it as a quality of the visual connection to the outdoors that satisfy building occupants. Of course, the, the concept of the window view quality is subjective since it is observer dependent and therefore influenced by conceptual factors, including 
like this phys physical attributes, climate, latitude, the surrounding landscape, or social related factors like demographic or cultural aspect or building program types. And design teams consider these conceptual factors only in the design process while setting these up the design goals. So what we try to do is like, we don't really develop some definition that more only works for one specific building type or demographic. So we just try to develop something more general, but touching the important background so that we define it. And then we kind of acknowledge that there should be the conceptual factors need to be adjusted in the design team. And then we discuss three main components of the window view quality and identify the targeted area where further research is needed. So first one is the content. The literature shows that views of the greenery and waterscape have a positive effect of people. However, we need to address whether you know, having different forms of nature or including nature elements indoors, atria with the trees have similar effects on occupant satisfaction. It's also related to biophilic design aspect. And the window views that include aesthetically pleasing but human made elements, which I'm showing the photos here, such as those containing art, architecture or landmarks should be also studied further to be included in the um, view quality framework. And then the last one is about the dynamic scenes that draw our attention. I more often preferred over static views I mentioned before, but however, excessive dynamic can be distracting and future studies needed to understand the desired balance of the movement within a space considering the scale, frequency, and periodicity. And then for about the access, uh, the, the second variable, amount of the window view, um, although the standard suggests the metrics mentioned earlier, there's no unified assessment method to quantify access. So while this is existing indices partially capture the amount of the views available to occupants, further empirical studies are required to validate their efficacy and applicability. So um, there are some things like, you know, we don't really know like a location of the observer or what's the viewing direction. As you can see in the photos, like there's two different viewing direction and if it's the same effect on people or not, those need to be answered. And then there should be like some spatial evaluation metrics like proposed by the other researchers. How we can kind of aggregate the view access of the space is important. And then other factors is like if it's only a stage of the building design, we may not have all the furniture or floor layout defined so that maybe we need to provide some probability of the view access achieve that kind of metrics. And for the third component about the clarity, um, there are a lot of things to be tested. So window transparency, reflection or color appearance or fabric shade patterns and occlusion patterns of the Venetian blind freak glass, exterior louvers can affect those clarity. So we really need to understand how these optical properties and patterns impact on how we perceive the view outside. And we also need to understand the different motivations for the facade operation that may affect clarity, such as glare, overheating, privacy, and how these are translated into the different control systems. And other factors require further investigation in view clarity study, including minimum viewing distance, what kind of outdoor view combined with that facade material will kind of uh, transmit different quality of the view is also an interesting part. And the veiling interior reflection, as you can see on the last image on the right, it's kind of, there are a lot of reflections sometimes, and then that should be considered. And also maintenance of the facade system will obscure the clarity. And then while the factors determining determining the overall quality of the window view are complex. It is also important for the designers and uh, consider the balance among the three variables, content and access clarity. So assessment tools should be more flexible enough for the design team to adopt the variables that meet design requirement. And we need to balance among these primary variables. Um, and then also we need more empirical research to support each um, variables and the integrated assessment. Um, so we, we don't have enough um, empirical findings so to build up a lot of different metrics or simulation software out of it. So 
the last one that I wanted to quickly show, you know, how can we integrate the view quality into building simulation process? So this is like the uh, diagram that I show just three different variables. So I can categorize that there are three different methods that you can simulate uh, the view quality. So first one, more related to view content or site planning or building messing states, it could be the image-based analysis. The second one is about the view access. Um, that could be the spatial analysis. And then the last one, the view clarity could be related to the temporal assessment. And then for the image basis and base analysis, um, there's like a one really uh, um, interesting paper that uh, Wen Ping Li and Holly Samuelson from Harvard did, um, looked into this research method. Uh, so they use this satellite imagery to create um, or simulate what kind of view we have, even though there's like a no building or no photograph um, is exists. So we can select the viewpoint and then select the field of view and then you can actually get that data. So they provided this comparison photos, like, you know, they took the on-site photos and the top row images, and then they when they run it with uh, simulate that um, satellite images result is pretty um, consistent. It's actually pretty good. So designers or engineers can use this method in the early stage of design. And this can be done more like a paramedic image from six images exporting from the um, satellite image. And it each one has like 60 degrees so that it combined all this three is panoramic view. And we can visualize the view through the different windows after exporting the view images with the correct field of view um, from that software. And then the view through the image can be have overlay with the different facade um, design so that we can actually like, you know, initially see what kind of this uh, facade um, design can impact on how the view is conveyed um, from the indoor environment. And then the second, uh, more related to access or quantifier special analysis can be done um, using the ray casting method, which is uh, also have proposed by MIT group or other people in the world. And um, using the um, one of the grasshopper component like ladybug and honeybee, you can actually have to calculate the view potential. So it's, it's more like um, you can kind of run the analysis more like a vector format, and then you can quantify which vector from your eye kind of touch which outdoor element, and then you can kind of compare the, those percentage uh, to quantify what kind of, of view you have. And it could be also applicable for the entire floor plan, and it's gonna be aggregated like view access of the space. And then the other spatial analysis I found is like, um, there's like a paper came out from the Cornell. Um, Jia Kim led this effort. And then she also used a similar um, like a method, but she tried to quantify which rays like, like a hitting the window and then uh, let the users kind of like um, adjust the uh, accuracy of the resolution. And then we can quantify what kind of outdoor objects it's touching that window surface. And then she kind of proposed that uh, there's S potential visual exposure index, which can be overlay in the spatial metrics uh, in the setting. The lastly, like the temporal analysis was uh, was done, or, or it's currently um, many researchers working on the command line radiance environment, uh, renderings of the view through the fabric shade and like blinds are shown here. So for the fabric, like BSDF um, by directional scattering distribution function result in the blurred view while used with the peak extraction result in sharper clarity of the um, tree outside of the view. And then for the blinds, which is the, um, the image in the bottom, um, BSD generated images are insufficient. Uh, and then they kind of combine that with the uh, proxy geometry so that they were able to achieve, um, simulate that uh, view clarity effect of that um, the, the specific uh, facade material. So um, 
so so far we talk a lot about like if, how to quantify the view quality and then how we can simulate the view and then at the end like you know engineers or architect or clients will ask like we are not gonna design our building only for the view right so we need to kind of consider lighting thermal and ventilation all like indoor environment quality together and then my um this is something that uh, i kind of came up with the idea of like simultaneous analysis of indoor environmental factors uh, like a few years ago and then i'd like to add one more variable which is a view and then it could be something like this. So when we have like thermal analysis, ventilation analysis, and light analysis parallel, we can add one more variable, which is view quality, so that we can support the early design stage of design with um, the view quality, with the parallel with the other environmental quality. So with that, um, it's exactly three um, three forty five, uh, and then I'd like to have any. Uh, questions or answer any questions if you have any and then if you guys have any um, questions also you can email me too thank you thank you one he so far we have two questions and so we can start with those and if anyone else has any other question feel free to add it to the q a and when i get to your question um i will go ahead and unmute you in case you want to talk um, and you can let us know whether you want me to read the question or whether you just you can just go ahead and go to it. So first off, we have um, Masumi Hagani, I believe. And let me find you in the list. Okay. Would you like to answer um, ask your question? Um, I think you're muted, maybe. Okay, I'll go ahead and ask the question. <laughs> Feel yeah. free to jump in if, if you like. Her question was about the same population or sample population. How did you find that 86 of participants would be enough for the reliability of the results? Oh, so that one, um, you know, I didn't present about the statistical analysis part, right? Um, because it's too much to present in the 45 minute presentation. Um, I can send you the paper. Um, we we did do some power analysis before, and then we were able to quantify it's around 100 participants should be good part. And then we were able to like find that like, um, we, we tried to recruit like, 100 ish but there are some data that we missed but we were able to find like statistical significant with the 86 people and then the effect size was good um so when you run the statistical analysis if you have a good power um at which is 0.8 um and then also like effect size is also like making sense then i think you can kind of see that that's the correct number of course if you add more people you will have more um, strong, like, um, how can I say, like the conclusion that, yeah, this is like, exactly the same, but 86 people was enough for the statistical power and then the effect size calculation. Yeah. Thank you for that. Next, we have Nathaniel Jones. Nathaniel, <laughs> I assume you can ask your question. Uh, hey, I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious if there's a, any connection between view quality and energy use. And I'm wondering, in particular, if the view quality metric encourages having a view to nature, um, does that encourage people to build on virgin land or to build tall buildings or otherwise create buildings that are poor energy performers? I mean, that, that's really interesting question. And I think there's a no right answer for that, which is a um, good question. So I, I think like there is a few papers came out recently. They look at the um the, how we can optimize the process and what's the trade off between that. And then there should be some like, you know, like a comparison. There's a no answer for like if the view is always bad for the energy effect. And then, you know, we, we should look into more um, more like a parametric setting and also like one in the you know urban 
neighborhood or one in the suburban. I mean, I, I don't know if I answered the question, but you know, there's no correct answer for that. So yeah. All right, thanks. Thank you, Nathaniel. Next, we have a few questions from Jothis Anand. He had about three questions, or I guess two. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and allow him to talk if he's available to do that. Uh, yeah, thank, uh, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have two questions regarding the results section on page 11. Could page 11. Yeah, yeah, I can go there. Let me, can I go there? 11. This one, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I felt the uh, don't you think the results are more into location specific uh, mm -hmm. than a general result? Uh, um, because, for example, if, if the if building is located in Phoenix or Houston, Mm -hmm. uh, then the situation would be different, right? You know, you, you might have a thermal distress once you sit near the window, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that one, so uh, I think I often get that kind of question. So it's like our study was completely blocked the, um, the thermal effect, right? We just wanted to observe like what's the import, um, the effect from the view, having a view versus no. And then the result that I'm presenting here, like, you know, 8% clean energy reduction and stuff is like, people claim it like, if the thermal environment kept the same with the window view under the slightly warm condition, people felt that one point degree C or 1.3 Fahrenheit lower thermal sensation. And then we tried to quantify what's the implication of that a lower th thermal sensation. And then when we ran um, the energy simulation using the medium uh, DOE reference building and located in the San Francisco, we see that 8% cooling energy reduction and 6.5 total HVAC um, energy reduction. So like you're saying, if we ran that energy model in Phoenix, it might be different. Yeah, it, that, that reference is more like specific to the building in San Francisco. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, so my question, uh, second question is, hey, thanks for the answer. So the second question is for even for the same location, uh, San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, there is no tree, uh, how do you think it impact on the glaring issue of the? Uh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that one is, I mean, it's it's really relevant question. Is important. So we need more research to quantify all those factors. So, like I said, like in the lab study we did, it was like a tree view, really close. There's no daylight effect. So we really like completely control the daylight effect. But then in the real building environment, we have all these things happening at the same time. So that's why we need to first set up the view quality assessment independent from the others first, because if we cannot measure, we cannot analyze. So we need to have like a parallel like matrix as if like daylight, thermal and ventilation. So after we set up that view quality matrix, we can actually evaluate all how all those four different um, factors work together to analyze. Right now we don't have the matrix, so I, I cannot really answer what could be the difference, but that's really relevant question. And then the reason why our research group and I try to promote the view uh, research more as so we need more empirical research to find out, to feed back to the analysis workflow or simulation. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. No worries. Thank you, Jothis. Um, our last question that we have right now, um, the person who asked it is no longer on the webinar. So I'll go ahead and ask the question from, I believe it's pronounced Neslihan, Turk mm -hmm. The question was, is view quality verified for the occupants sitting in the middle of the zone? That's a good question. And it's it's not only it's it's how far it is and how big window it's all factored together. It's since there's no clear answer. And I think that's that's one of the good questions, you know. It's about, you know, we always consider like like 15 feet is a perimeter, but I don't know what's the um, view access zone, right? It's really depending on like the uh, the size of I mean, ceiling height and like window to wall ratio and then distance. And then if if people sitting in the middle and then if there's like a um, furniture blocked, then also it's different. So it's not a simple answer, um, I can say, yeah. 
So it's all, I, I'm trying to say like, it's all about the access, view access issue. And then I presented like different factors matters. And then actually we worked on some VR study about it to quantify what's the effect. And then um, it's not published yet, but once it's published, I can share on my LinkedIn so that people can see it. Yeah. Great. Um, and we actually did get two more questions, but I wanted to go ahead and quickly go through the what we do at the end of the webinar just so that we don't run out of time for that. And then I'll jump back to the questions um, and do as many as we have time for. Okay, so I wanted to thank everyone again for coming and just let you know that if you want AI learning units, please email your name and AI member number to this email that I'm gonna put into the chat right now. You can email that. And then again, I put in the chat earlier a link for a, a form if you're interested in joining the research committee for BIPSA USA. And let's see, I want to mention the recording of this webinar is going to be available to ABIPSA members on the ABIPSA USA Education on Demand website. And I think that was all of that. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. And the next question we have is from um, John Key Lee. And I'm going to give you access to talk if you would like to ask your question. Okay, let's I'll go ahead and ask it. Unless feel free to jump in. The question is in terms of the last item, did you find a relationship between ventilation and view quality or um, energy and view thing? So so the, the last one is more like um the the framework that, that should be done in the future research. Sorry that I was not um like um clear about it like that's something that once we develop the solid view quality metrics then we can move on to that uh, ideas it's not that like i have done like the comparison work yet so thanks for the question thank you okay and then next question is from oh okay um next question is from gaurav Meta, and I'm gonna allow you to talk here. Give you a second, see if you can figure out the microphone. Okay. <laughs> the question is, it's a follow-up question on page 11, energy savings from earlier. How was the lower thermal sensation approximated? Is it through a thermostat oh, setting in the energy model? No, no, no. So that one, um, actually, you know, like the person, you need to like send me email. I can send you the paper. Um, there's like um, theoretical background and there's equation we can calculate. So people say, okay, this much lower sensation. And then we were able to quantify that one based on the equation fine. So I showed you like, you know, people can just answer wherever and then we get the average of that for one with the window and one without the window condition. And we kind of calculate that difference. And then that difference can be put into one of the variable in the equation so that we can convert that into the degree C or degree uh, Fahrenheit um, effect. Yeah. Great. Um, I think we have time for one more question, if someone's interested. I actually had a question myself, so <laughs> I may okay. throw that in there if I don't see another one real quick. I'll give a few seconds. Okay. My question was, I, I, I guess I would, it's more of a suggestion for future research. Sure. Yeah. I've always thought it'd be interesting to look at um, like a simulated view or like a like a mm -hmm. high definition TV or something. I've seen people who've come out with like products where it's like a fake window. Right. And it's either a like looped recording of something or maybe even 
you could have like a camera outside the building and you, sh you actually show a live feed of what's going on. Uh -huh. um, I was thinking about that when Nathaniel asked his question, because I think there's definitely a lot of you, as you saw in your research, there's a lot of benefits of having good views, but then there's also, there's a trade off between that with thermal comfort from like right, right, solar yeah. glare, glare and heat gain and all this stuff. So I was just thinking it'd be kind of neat to see if you could, if it's quantified it. Yeah. Well, if, like, yeah, if a fake view would still actually give, um, I mean, there are a few, actually, there are a few papers. Actually, if you go to the hospital where you cannot have a window, they usually have something. I mean, like there are some few papers look into it and they claim it all like it's just more of the same, but uh, all the researchers think that maybe it's not true because it's like, you know, there's so much things happening in the window. It's circadian stimuli, their dynamic stuff and also color temperature difference and everything. So it's really hard to say it's going to be the same, but of course, different um, like artificial window will create different aspect and certainly it's better than nothing, but it cannot be replaced by the window. That was a little bit of the consensus among the researchers. Yeah, but thanks for okay. the question. And then it's yeah. like 4 p.m. So I need to jump. But <laughs> so yeah. if, you, if you guys have any more further question, uh, my, there's like a my, like, uh, my email, right? It's my name and then jit.edu. So I can share that one. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of stuck, okay. So, I mean, just, just email me and I can send you my paper or we can have more discussion because um, this is emerging field and there's a lot to be done. So any question or idea will be appreciated. But thank you so much for inviting me and it was fun. Yeah, thank you again. And thank you for everyone that joined us today. Thank you, bye-bye.